Hello, my name is Roboverse. Today is yet again that time of the week. That's right, I'm here to talk about our favorite batch yet again, aka The Bad Batch. No, not the crew, Roboboy, the show. The Bad Batch is a Disney Plus show for crying out loud. And don't spoil the show for those who haven't watched it yet. Oh yeah, right. Sorry about that. Yeah, you all are aware by now that this video will contain spoilers as per usual. So go watch the episode first. Anyways, jokes aside, I'm here to talk about the Bad Batch once more. More specifically, the penultimate finale of the series. This episode was yet again a prime example of the show at its best, with so much build-up, callbacks, and symbolizes a true end to the era we have all loved. The era of the clones. In fact, the latter topic deserves a video in and of itself, as the Clone Wars era has had so many beginnings and endings by now. But I'm not just here to talk about that. Well, if you really want to talk about the episode, then get on with it already. I'm waiting. Okay, okay, just please calm down. But jokes aside, for real this time, I shall ramble on and on about the specialities this episode had to offer. There are plenty to list, but I think I can scrimmage through them all in a short amount of time. And with that being said, let's do this! Despite the tumult that occurred all throughout this episode, it actually had some humor. Specifically when we got to see our good old droid pal AZ34... God, I can't even fathom his full name. But back to the topic at hand. AZ is a pretty funny and loyal companion given his humorous personality and surprise-like tactics. We already saw how he and Fives nearly stopped Order 66, and we got to see him return for the second time this show. He even gets his time to shine during vital instances, like when he tried to defend Omega by knocking out a Shadow Trooper. Or what about the time when he did Fives a crucial favor by removing his and Tup's inhibitor chips? Good times, good times. And now that he's with the Bad Batch, I really hope they'll make him an official member of the team. He'd be like the Chopper or R2-D2 of the Batch. That is, assuming they all get off Kamino alive. But back to the intensity we go, given that the rest of the episode besides AZ is pretty tense and full of throwbacks. When Crosshair wanted the Bad Batch to join him and the Empire to give the latter newfound strength, I was surprised. I thought he would be more resentful towards them after what had happened on Bracca, but he still wanted them to join him nonetheless. This definitely has to do with his inhibitor chip being removed like he stated in the episode. While he definitely did retain some characteristics from the chip due to the intensified programming, his personality had definitely calmed down from before. I think that Crosshair definitely had motives to reunite with his brothers, given the fact that the full effects of the chip had faded away. However, the permanent effects that he sustained due to serving the Empire for a stint was what made him want the Bad Batch to join him instead of the other way around. It didn't even matter to him that the Empire was merely using him as a tool. All that did matter was that as long as he and his brothers could fight side by side again, he would have no problem continuing to serve the Empire, hence why he offered them the chance to join him. This scene also heavily reminded me of the time when Maul wanted him and Ahsoka to join forces and destroy Sidious together. Both Maul and Crosshair had their moments of extreme brutality and a thirst for vengeance, mowing down their opponents like fierce attack dogs. But now, their bloodthirsty nature has clearly subsided. This episode truly made things come full circle when we saw the Bad Batch, including Crosshair, all fighting against the Dark Troopers. I thought again that this moment would be the one moment where Crosshair would truly rejoin his brothers, even after being used by the Empire. But regardless of the tension that had existed between them throughout the season, they were still able to fight side by side like true brothers. And most importantly, not only were they able to fight together, but they were also being left to lay down their lives together, as Kamina was on the verge of destruction. Another thing that made this episode come full circle was when Hunter and Crosshair engaged in a standoff. 
The close-ups we saw in both of their eyes directly parallels the scene where Crosshair initially turned on them in the first episode, and thankfully, Hunter shot first this time. It looks like he really did learn from his prior standoff against a cowboy bounty hunter, didn't he? Yeah, he did, but moving on. However, the biggest highlight this episode had to offer was when Camino, or more specifically, Topoka City, the very place where the era of the clones all began, was just left desolate, empty, and ready to be destroyed by the Imperial fleet. Kamino being destroyed is such a big deal from a literary perspective. It symbolizes a true end to the era of clones, as their home was straight up destroyed to rubble. We already saw the transition from Republic to Empire, and clone to Stormtrooper take place throughout the entirety of the season, and now the transition is complete. It only makes sense that such a remarkable era ends in the very place it all began in. This and the clone burial we saw at the end of the Clone Wars both symbolize the end of an era, but what sets the former apart from the latter to me is this. Kamino, it's the home where all clones, Shiny or Commander, started. On it, every clone you've ever loved or hated grew up in that place. Rex, Fives, Cody, Echo, Hunter, and many more to be exact. From them passing their cadet test to serving in the army, they all had to start somewhere. And that place was home. Even whenever said home was threatened, they didn't and wouldn't want to see such an emotionally significant place get torn apart by foreign invaders. They would defend it to their last breath, even if it meant sacrifices. It didn't matter that they were viewed as expendable beings by the Kaminoans, or not expendable beings by most of the Jedi. All that mattered to them was achieving victory regardless of the cost, by protecting their home, protecting the very place they grew up in, and most importantly, protecting it so that it could continue to serve like a solid home for the future generations of clones. But in the end, it was all in vain for them. In the eyes of the Kaminoans, they were nothing but cannon fodder most of the time, and the Empire viewed them the exact same way. Only this time, they were quickly dispatching the clones and their home along with them. An iconic place that served as the starting point for where each clone began, a place that was once filled with patriotism, ingenuity, and mass production, was just left abandoned and ready to be destroyed. Think about it, the home that the clones protected, and where they first fired their blasters, had laughs in the cafeteria, slept in their quarters, and were treated for their injuries, was going to be gone in just one fell swoop. And when it finally happened, it came quickly, and on a cliffhanger for our unsung heroes. The era of clone production, no, the era of the Clone Wars, has officially come to an end with this one scene of nothing but destruction and ruins of buildings falling into the water. Yet somehow, while that era has come to an end, the era of the Bad Batch has not, and perhaps this is just the beginning for what is to come. There is so much we have seen, from the end to eras, and the transition to the Empire, but again, only time will tell for what is truly in store for all of us next. Thanks for watching.